Hi folks, it's Bob from Mountain Crest Farms. Today, I'm paying for being lazy through the winter. I didn't take care of my electric fence like I should. It got tore up. I ignored it because my pigs didn't get out. They liked where they were. Well, yesterday, uh, right over here, about 10 feet from me, the pigs went under the fence. Um, I had three down in another pen. They stayed where they are. And I had my three biggest ones, 700-pound boar, Roscoe, uh, about a 350-pound sow, Hammy, and a 350-pound gilt. And um, they went under the fence. And right in front of me over here, about 30 feet, it's a road. It's a private road, dirt road, gravel road. And uh, not much traffic, maybe 15, 20 cars a day, but it is a road. And there are people beyond me up the road that have property up there that could be going up and down. And I'm sitting there with 1,000, 1,500 pounds of pigs running around out here. So it's, and it's time for me to fix the fence. And I figure at the same time, I can show you all a little bit about electric fence. First, I'm going to show you what's wrong and tell you how it needs to be fixed and then i'm all a little bit of the video is going to cover actually fixing the fence and then we're going to go down to where the energizer for the fence is and show you how to set up an electric fence inexpensively or relatively inexpensively not cheap if you do things cheap you pay for it it's the most expensive thing in the world so hang around after the little intro video and let's talk about electric fencing. Yeah. Okay, as you can see, the fencing's a mess. All of this, all of this was laying on the ground, and ended right about here it started up there beyond the pickup truck and the first 20 or 30 feet it was okay and then it wound up laying out there on the ground it was all tangled up both of them i wouldn't run a wire about 18 inches off the ground and went about anywhere from three, th two or three to five or six inches off the ground got right down to about here and it was a mess we just cut the end of it off right there by that tree Coming back up here, I've got the two of them sorted out, top and bottom. This is the, this is the bottom one up here, and this is the top one right there. The bottom one right there, you can see right there, it's kind of ragged. So we're going to splice there to start with. Everything back up the hill is fine. And then it's got to run down to... You can, I don't know if you can actually tell it's a gate down there. That big tree that's leaning to the right, right there past it. And all you do with an electric fence, is, except the connections on each end, is tie it to a connect, uh, insulator. I got ceramic insulators up there. I got ceramic insulators down here. It runs along the fence and it runs through some things like this on T-post, and these are T-post standoffs. Uh, I'll have a better description of them back down there in the bottom of the video, but you attach these to T-post, and you attach the wire to these. And first thing we're gonna do is show you how these attach to the T-post, because it's really, really easy. Okay. All you have to do to attach these things to T-posts is, I'll, I'm doing it from the outside, I'm not afraid of the pigs, they're not even in there, is pick where you want them. I want this top one about right here. And this end, this end right here goes on the T-post, the wire goes here. And you just come in and I want that around here. Hook that on one side of the T-post, bring this around so this other right here hooks on the T-post and then push it back. And if it 
it's on one of those little nubs it won't push back good so you have to get up or down above or below and then just push it on around and sometimes they go on easy and then sometimes they do like this one and don't go on so easy And when that happens, you just, a screwdriver would be better. It wouldn't mess up the blade on my knife. This one needs sharpening anyway. And it just hooks on there. Nice and simple. And then when you run your wire, just for example, I'll reach through here. This, this end has a hook pointed down. This end has a hook pointed up. So you run it in like that, and it won't go anywhere. If they push down, one side will catch it. If they push up, the other side will. Now, let's talk about wire. I don't know if you can hear that weed eater running in the background, but it gives me a chance to give my cheap versus inexpensive lecture again. Cheap's the most expensive thing you can do. Could you keep having to do it and doing it and doing it? And that weed eater is a good example. I used to buy the $98 special every spring at one of the big box stores or at a hardware store or wherever. And uh, I bought it every spring. And I got tired of that a few years back. And in 2011, I went out and I spent, uh, I think it was about $300. And that was at a discount store or a cheapo store, a big box store. Fact is, it was at Home Depot, and I went out and spent $300 on a good Echo. That was in 2011. That's what you hear running in the background now. This is 2018. Uh, that This spring is seven years that Echo has been going. I've had to put a primer bulb on it one time because the old one cracked because I left it out in the sun too much, and ultraviolet rays made the plastic brittle. And... I, re I replace filters, air filters, gas filters in the tank, and I believe that's all I've done to it, seven years. I would have spent $700 on $100 a year every spring getting the cheap ones. That's the best example I can think of about cheap versus inexpensive. Yeah, I believe in being frugal. Frugal's being inexpensive. It is not being cheap. Now, let's go back and apply that to this wire that uh, I'm using. That roll of wire is, I believe the company is Zerba, or Zebra, Z-A-R-E-B-R-A, -E or Z-A-R-E-B-A. -E um, not rem don't remember exactly how it's spelled. It's a brand name wire. Um, there's a wire that looks very, very similar to it. Um, sold at Tractor Supply under the Tractor Supply store brand. They look similar enough. I bought the other one, saved a few bucks, used less than half the roll, and wound up pulling up all the wire that I'd put out and going back and getting a roll of this and using this instead. Why? Two reasons. One of them's real important and one of them's kind of important. This wire has, uh, has nine conductors in it. It's real visible. And you Georgia fans won't like it. It's black and gold. I wouldn't put anything black and red up. <laughs> oh, I had to do that. But uh, there's nine conductors in here. You can't see them all. And they're stainless steel conductors. The other wire has seven conductors, number one. It says it's stainless steel, but there are different grades of stainless steel. And it doesn't conduct as much. Um, I noticed my pigs were not responding to the fence very well. And I checked the wire, and it was hot. And I ran the voltage on it. I've got a voltage tester. And the voltage said 4,500 volts. And I said, wait a minute. 
should be showing about 7,000 volts. There's a lot of volts in an electric fence. There's no amperage. The amperage is measured in milliamps. Otherwise, it'd kill you. Volts gives you a shock. Amps kills you. Um, first problem was it didn't conduct electricity worth a flip. And the second problem was I don't know what the wire was actually made of. Wire cutters wouldn't cut it. My knife wouldn't cut it. It was a pain in the butt to work with. And every time you finally got a, sp a spot cut, you had had to mess with it so much getting it cut. It was all, both ends were all frayed out. They weren't nice clean cuts or anything like that. So back to the Zeriba wire. So we're going to take this wire, which is, but we're going to take it right there, cut it back behind the, where it's all frayed. And we're going to take this wire, nice new Zerba wire, and we're going to splice them together. And all a splice is, all a splice is, is holding them parallel and doing an overhand knot and pulling it tight. I'll try to get it on camera, but it might not be right. Run both from the back side of the fence. There we go. Parallel, ends match. See, that's got all those conductors touching each other. And then when you pull, tie the knot in it, and pull it nice and tight, snug, get it down good and tight. That way, electricity that's coming from that end will go on up and not lose voltage. So, there's a splice, and the next thing I'll be showing you is on down, showing you how to connect it to a con uh, ceramic connector, ceramic insulator, and the wire that's coming up from the energizer. Okay, so we're going to connect this wire to this insulator, but before you do that, you really need to put one of these on. This one was clean. It was new, as a matter of fact, it's never been used. And then I laid it down on the ground. When I went inside for the rain, this is a jaw. This is a tensioner, tensioner for the uh, for the fence. Just take and run your wire through there, through there, Out the other end and these are cheap they're uh, oh gosh I want to say a pack of five is about four dollars at tractor supply you just put them on the wire push them down out just get them out of the way for right now there's already one on the other wire you got to put it on now you can't put it on after the wire is connected got a lot of extra wire here certainly hope I've got this aimed right and just run the wire through here's a, this is not necessarily the way to do it the way to do it is actually to use some different equipment there's pieces that you're supposed to use to do splices and all that and I believe in doing things right, but that is not always doing them by the book. Rather than buy some connectors to make splices 
or some connectors to attach here. I see nothing wrong with this. I've run it. I ran it through here, came out the top, ran it through here, and came out here again. I'm going to pull it tight. What that does is gets the wire I just ran through in good contact with the other wires coming from around here. Now I'm going to run it. Through, I'm coming over the top with that this this one a second time. This time when I come out the other side, I'm going to push it down to the bottom. Why would I do that? I do that so that when pigs get to messing with it and bumping on it, they aren't. It's not all up here at the top where it can be pushed up out of the way. Pigs are smart. I'm not saying they're that smart, but better safe than sorry. And then I give it one more wrap. Back around the top again. That way it's basically tied to that wire here coming from down the energizer. Okay. Then I just go over. Pull it through. You're just wanting to make sure that you've got really good contact with this, which it does. Got a lot more extra here than I needed. Over the top and back through. And we'll go over the top and back through again one more time. And then I'm going to come around the insulator. No, I want to go this way. The reason I don't want to go over it, the reason I want to go under it, see how, the, see how this knot is? If I pull from here, it's trying to loosen it. If I pull from this way, it's trying to tighten it. So I'll do that. I'll come through the insulator one more time. Which is really just to hold that knot tight. And then I'll tie it off here again. One or two will suffice. Let's go to there. And there. Pigs are wanting up here because number one, there used to be an up here until they escaped yesterday. And number two, you can't see it from the direction the camera's pointed. There's big water, big um, bucket of water for them up here. There's a smaller bucket down on the other side of that gate, but it's just a little three gallon bucket I've been having to keep full for them since last night, since put them all in there because they're in a good pen where the fence works instead of being in a pen that doesn't work like this one does so that's it and then that's it except for these and all you have to do once you've got your wire in the connectors excuse me in the posts insulators on the posts and you get everything connected down here see this little bit loose all you have to do and i should if, if you're on the inside and you can avoid the wire i tighten them quite often without turning the fence off however 
messing with it through the fence and trying to take care of everything to do this video. The fence is off. You just tighten that up. There. Now we have a good fence. When it's turned back on, it's going to be a hot fence. So that's how you repair, a, that's, and that's how you run a fence. Um, all I did was run 100, 120 feet of, oh God, probably a half mile of fencing that I've got. Repair, running it, it's all the same thing. Just make sure you got good connections. Just make sure that anytime you come around a post or getting past a gate, this is not the right way to get past a gate by the book. It's the right way that works, however. But just make sure wires are not touching where they're not supposed to. See that? This one over here is close. And make sure they are touching where they are supposed to. Alright, now let's go down the hill a little bit farther and take a look at how my electric fence originates. Take a look at the energizer and how I power the energizer. Okay folks, the fence is fixed. Now let's take a look at the heart of the system. What makes the entire thing work? Okay, folks, for an electric fence to work, you've got three main components. Well, four. There's your testers out there. Not really. you got three main components. You have to have an energizer. You do not have to spend a fortune on an energizer. This one is sold by Southern States. I can't remember who makes it. It is a major manufacturer. They make quality equipment sold under their own name as well. And instead of spending three or four hundred dollars on a fence, on an energizer by Zerba or Gallagher, this one cost me a hundred and nine dollars. I was looking online the other day. I think it's up to a hundred and twelve bought through Southern States. Uh, like I say, I'll put the manufacturer down at the bottom. If you've investigated electric fence, you will recognize the name. Next, you got to power it with something. I use a 12 volt. It's not a car battery. This is a 12 volt marine deep cycle battery. That's what I use to power the fence. With a full charge, that will power the fence for about three months. Now, I don't like to go that long because in three months it's going to be dead. Two and a half months, it's not. I usually come out here and put a trickle charger, a battery tender on it for about a day, day and a half. I do that about every month or month and a half. Third thing, and just as important as the first two, is that. And that and that a good grounding system everybody all the manufacturers will tell you that you need three grounds eight feet long driven at least six feet into the ground to ground your system or the energizer the battery however you power it is useless I found that out. I tried to put just this one in. And guess what? When it got a little bit dry, pigs ignored the fence. I've got three in there now. They don't ignore the fence when it's dry. They don't ignore the fence when it's wet. Roscoe right there. 700 pounds of bore. That's as close as he'll put his nose to that fence. He does not like getting shocked. Neither do any of the rest of them. 
Okay, that's about it for how to fix the fence, the guts of what makes the fence work. And uh, if you learned something from it, if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up down there at the bottom somewhere. Down there, I, no, down there. If, uh, if you're not a subscriber, go down there and subscribe. And when you subscribe, a little bell will appear right beside the subscriber button hit the little bell and you'll get notifications whenever I post a video. Don't worry, I'm not gonna fill you up 12 times a day. I'm trying to get to about two or three a week. Right now I'm doing about two or three a month. But come back and see us and always remember, the tomb was empty. He is alive. Y'all have a blessed day.